An eruption of the Yellowstone supervolcano could destroy human civilization as we know it. But NASA has a plan to prevent that from happening and to save us. Be sure to stay tuned to the end if you want to learn how NASA plans to stop the supervolcano and when an eruption might even occur. If you like it, I'm galactically happy to get a thumbs up and a comment, because that's how we get the YouTube algorithm to erupt and this video to be shown to even more people. Thanks a lot guys and welcome. Here in Europe we have lots of impressive and exciting volcanoes. I just visited Etna a few weeks ago and was really impressed by the moonscape with all the craters up there. Write me in the comments which volcanoes you have visited in your life and which one was the most impressive. I am very curious about your volcanic travel reports. But now to Yellowstone, this supervolcano stretches under the American states of Wyoming, Montana and Idaho and has a huge magma chamber that covers an area of 60 by 40 kilometers, and is up to 14 kilometers deep. The forces at work here become clear when we look at the likely effects of an eruption. Here we see how far the ashfall would be dispersed in the event of a month-long eruption. Almost over the entire US. But this would not only affect the US, it would change the global climate. Large amounts of sulfur dioxide would be released into the atmosphere, leading to the formation of so-called sulfuric acid aerosols. The aerosols reflect sunlight and cause the Earth's surface to cool. We are talking about a global cooling process that would last for years, leading to crop losses, food shortages, and other environmental and economic problems. At least no one would be stuck on the road. Not only would a lot of people die from the direct consequences of the eruption, i.e. the ash cloud and pyroclastic flows, but then people would also suffer for a long time from the indirect consequences on agriculture, technology and infrastructure. This now raises the not-so-insignificant question. When will it erupt next? In the last two million years there have been three known supervolcano eruptions in the Yellowstone area. The most recent one took place about 640,000 years ago. Let's do some math, three eruptions. In two million years. So quite roughly an eruption every 600,000 years, the last one about 600,000 years ago? Oh oh. Statistically, it would be Yellowstone's turn again soon, but I mean soon in geological terms. Don't worry folks, our existence will probably not be ended by the supervolcano eruption, but only by an almighty artificial intelligence. But well, there's always something. Nonetheless, we can see that Yellowstone will eventually erupt again. It is only a question of when, and not if. So it makes sense to start thinking about what to do about it now. And in fact, NASA scientists have come up with an absolutely insane plan. A team from NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory studied the possibility of harnessing the geothermal energy of the Yellowstone supervolcano, while reducing the risk of an eruption. Their plan is to pump water into the magma reservoir below Yellowstone National Park to draw out the heat and lower the temperature in the volcano. That sounds exactly like the beginning of a disaster movie. Basically, the idea of using the geothermal potential of the supervolcano and at the same time reducing the eruption risk is ingenious. Because the amounts of energy produced there are of course immense and could probably solve all our energy problems with the right technology. Which would of course mean that such technology would be provisionally banned in Germany for the time being. But never mind. What exactly did the NASA researchers have in mind? Their concept is based on the idea, as already mentioned, of pumping water into the magma reservoir below Yellowstone National Park. This water would draw the heat out of the magma system, which would then reduce the temperature in the volcano. The heated water could then be pumped back to the surface and used to generate geothermal energy. The continuous extraction of heat would, over time, make the volcano less likely to erupt. Sounds simple and the process itself is not that complicated. At a very basic level, we can say that such a geothermal power plant works in four steps. Water injection, steam production, turbine drive, and condensation. The water is injected into the magma reservoir, it heats up and rises as steam. There it is fed into a turbine, which produces electrical energy. 
it then cools in a condenser and is returned to the geothermal cycle. Absolutely brilliant. So here we go, let's build this thing. There is one teeny tiny problem, unfortunately. In order to cool Yellowstone down enough to stop it from erupting, we would have to extract energy amounting to, and get this. 20 gigawatts. How much is that? Well, NASA researchers have calculated that we would need to run the geothermal power plant for about 16,000 years to do that. Really long-term thinking, and implementing the project would also pose significant technical challenges and require investment, because shafts up to 10 kilometers long would have to be drilled to get water deep enough towards the magma chamber. The heat would then be extracted from the underside of the magma chamber. Because if you simply drill into the magma chamber head-on from the top, you risk the volcano erupting. The researcher responsible, Brian Wilcox of the Jet Propulsion Lab, says, there is a danger of triggering an eruption, which is precisely what you want to prevent. Drilling into the magma chamber from below will prevent the heat from coming up from below to ever reach the top of the chamber, where the real threat is created. So we're talking about a gigantic megaproject that could only be accomplished across generations. After NASA's Jet Propulsion Lab had worked out the idea, no steps were taken towards a concrete implementation. Then, in October of last year, a new paper was published that elaborated more concretely how the energy from Yellowstone could be tapped. And the numbers are really something. The cost would be $3.5 trillion. With over 11 quadrillion watt-hours of energy output, this project could supply the entire USA. And like NASA, the new paper concludes that the supervolcano would be cooled down to the point where it would never erupt again. So far it's all just suggestions and grey planning, but I think someone should seek funding for this project and get it started. Our descendants would certainly thank us. Because as Dr. Brian Wilcox says, Yellowstone explodes about every 600,000 years, and it's been about 600,000 years since the supervolcano last erupted, which should make us sit up and take action. Feel free to drop me your opinions in the comments, should we tackle the Yellowstone power plant megaproject, even if it's expensive, science fiction why and super long? Or should we rather focus our energy and money on other projects? I'm very curious to hear what you guys think. Just like water in Yellowstone, I'd love to pump up my channel subscribe account. We are close to 1000 subscribers. If you haven't subscribed yet, or know any space loving friends or relatives, I'd love for you to help me reach the next galactic goal of 1000. Thanks guys. Not only on Earth, but also on other planets there are really crazy landscape formations. And one of the strangest places in the universe is probably the Terminator Zone on exoplanets. This Terminator Zone could now have brought us the breakthrough in the search for extraterrestrial life. In the next video you can join me on a cosmic journey to the Terminator Zone, so visit me again. The video has become really exciting. And if you want to continue supporting the channel, I always look forward to your visit to the space shop, where you can find the t-shirts from the videos. Otherwise, I'd say see you in the next video. Take care, guys.